Hi everyone, Corey here with Team Kramer Fishing and it is ice fishing season. And that means it's time to take off this hat and put on this one. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the new stuff that I have for this ice fishing season. And I'm really excited. This weekend we should be on the ice if the weather holds. Okay, for those of you that have been following the channel for a very long time, we have slowly been building up our ice fishing gear. I think the first season that we filmed um, was the first time we ever tried ice fishing. And that year, I think we just had like an auger, a spud bar, some ice picks, and that was it. And we went out and we did manage to catch a few fish. And then the next year, we added a little bit more gear um, we got a sled, we got a shack, and then our third year we added a, a flasher so we could find the fish and, you know, a heater and some things like that. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we added this year. I would say last year was the first year <clears throat> we really had almost all the basics of what you really should have when you're ice fishing. Um, to enjoy it, to be able to ice fish. Um, you know, during colder weather and things like that and for longer periods of time. So um, this year we've kind of expanded a little bit more so that we can fish um, a little bit more in the beginning of the ice fishing season when the ice is a little bit thinner and a little bit more at late ice when the ice, you know, when the ice is melting. Um, so a little bit more safety equipment and, um, and then just some other fun stuff that I thought I'd try this year that we hadn't tried before. Okay, let's start with some of the small stuff. I've actually just started using one of these um, reaction tackle uh, wall fishing wallets. So this has basically all of my ice fishing gear in it. I just emptied out all of my, my normal fall fishing stuff and replaced it with all of my ice fishing stuff. So in the past I used kind of a bucket and you end up kind of digging around like a small ice cream bucket, not a big one and you end up kind of digging around for everything. Things get kind of lost um, down in the bottom. So with this, you can see I have soft plastics, more soft plastics, more soft plastics. These are like ice, all ice fishing size. Mostly they're Euro Tackle and Fishing Assault. Um, so that's what I'll mostly be using this season for ice fishing. Then I have some, turn it around here. So there's some smaller stuff, weights, hooks, um, swivels, normal stuff, all small stuff though. So one thing that I am going to be trying that's a little bit different this year um, is we are going to have some bigger size dead sticks that we're going to put minnows on, which we have done before, but we're going to try traveling north a little bit more where there's more pike and walleye, which we don't have too many around where we live. Um, so hopefully we can do some trips up north, start catching some fish that we haven't really had a chance to catch around here. So my strategy with those is rather than use like an automatic fisherman or a tip up, which would just be more gear that I would have to have. I only have a small sled. I have, we, we take a Honda CRV, which is it's four wheel drive, but, uh, and it's, it's great in the snow, but there's not a lot of storage space when you start putting sleds and, and jacks and everything in there. Um, so I have to be pretty strategic about how to fit everything in there. And I'm going to show you some of that a little bit later in this video. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our dead stick rods because that's one of the big new things that we're going to have. So I use these VMC circle hooks. Um, this spring for panfish, they're actually offset. I didn't know they were offset when I ordered them. But um, so offset circle hooks are kind of... I mean, there's not really a use for them. The idea of using a circle hook is that it hooks in the fish's mouth, but when they're offset in the corner of the fish's mouth and doesn't get stuck in their gut, I'm trying to put this back here, um, but when they're offset, that kind of stops some of that circle hook action because the, the offset part tends to catch in the mouth of the, of the fish or the throat of the fish when they're swallowing it. I actually tested these I did not make a video on them yet. I love the hooks. Um, 
but I found that the Eagle Claw circle hooks, these are size six, so that's the trick. These are basically the smallest circle hooks that you can get. And circle hooks need to be bigger because of the way that they're designed. You can't just make a tiny circle hook. It doesn't really work. It has to have a gap big enough to hook the corner of the fish's mouth or the top of the mouth. So at any rate, what I found was the Eagle Claw circle hooks worked better to prevent swallowing. So a lot of times I'll fish half a night crawler on a number six size Aberdeen hook. The biggest problem with that is you get lots of swallows and when I'm fishing with the whole family it means I'm retying everybody's lines all the time. Um, so I, I tried these circle hooks out to see you know if I could prevent those. The, the Eagle Claw regular standard non-offset circle hooks work pretty good for that. Um, swallows were reduced, they weren't completely eliminated. And actually these offset ones I would say reduced some of the swallows too, but you still had them. However, the good part about these VMCs is they're much sharper and since they are offset, they are a little, you get better hook sets. Um, so they seem like a good balance. I had some left over. It seemed like a good balance for fishing a live minnow or a cup bait um, down on a dead stick rod, right, for ice fishing. So I picked up, these just arrived the other day for the uh, Cyber Week special. These are the uh, Whisker Seeker Tackle, Whisker Stick, Glass 38 inch. Um, so these are gonna be our dead stick rods. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fish those small offset circle hooks on our smaller bait, bait feeder reel. So I reviewed this Akuma reel not long ago. I've restrung it with six pound uh, suffix ice, uh, ice magic I think is the name of it. And um, this will be one of our dead stick rods. The other one is identical, so the deal was uh, you buy two rods and you get like a special price and some other stuff uh, from Whisker Seeker. So an identical one. This is actually a real, I might do a quick sort of initial impression on this. I've actually used it quite a bit, but I haven't caught very many fish on it yet. This is another bait feeder. This is new from Daiwa MCAST with their LT design, uh, 2500, and it's a re it's a really sweet reel, but I I haven't reviewed it yet because I haven't caught any like decent fish on it yet, but I have been able to cast it. I have had it out fishing with it a fair amount. Um, so I might do my initial impressions um, on this, but it's small and light enough that for a big rod that you're fishing for like pike or catfish with or like this, um, where you're dead sticking, I think it's gonna work well. Same thing, six pound suffix. I'm not gonna go through all the rods. I did. I do have one new one from last year that's a little different than just the normal cheap rods that I use. Um, this is a medium action, uh, I wanna say it's Beaver Dam, yeah. So Beaver Dam, 30 inch carbon fiber. Um, it's really pretty, I picked it up at, Sweet, at uh, Fleet Farm. And this is gonna be for a little, like, moving up from like a noodle rod, which is super duper duper flexible. Um, this would be for more fishing um, spoons and stuff. So, and this is on Vivian's rod, I think, a reel. And then I also picked up for this year, a whole bunch of these uh, glow jigs. Um, I got these from, I think they sent me a case too. Yeah, Energized Outdoors. Um, so I bought like, I don't know, 30 of them or something, or maybe it was $30 worth. But they, they had a special on them, so these were all on special. And then they sent the case too. So those are all, all these glow um, jigs are something we didn't really have last year. We had a few that didn't glow, like these tungsten toads here. And then we're all, so the rod that I just showed you is more for fishing like these, these heavier um, forage minnows and so forth things like that. So um, we're set up a little bit better, I think. Well, we are set up better than we have in the past. And um, those are the new additions tackle-wise. But we also have some other new additions. Let me show you. 
So this year, <clears throat> this year I picked up a float suit from Striker Ice. This is the Trekker. I got the jacket and the bibs. They had an awesome special at Frank's Great Outdoors. I got both of the bib and the jacket for $189. Um, I could, figured I couldn't beat that, so I picked it up. They also threw in a pair of gloves. Um, so this should, you know, allow us to fish outside of the shack a little bit more. Fish when it's colder outside. Uh, I picked up a pair of Predator bi Youth bibs for Vivian. So she has some bibs and she also has some like minus 20 degree um, boots. Uh, my boots are still just my normal boots. I might need to upgrade those eventually, but um, we now have flow suits. So, you know, we can fish on a little bit thinner ice. Before I would, I would usually not fish on ice under eight, five inches. And most of the time it was eight inches or or more, honestly. When you have your kids out there, you always wanna be extra safe. So this just gives us a little bit extra safety, but allows us to go out during times when it's early ice, like this weekend, maybe the ice will be four, four inches or something. And um, we know that we're, you know, not in danger of dying at least if we do happen to fall through the ice. Okay, so this is one of the bigger changes that we're gonna have this year that will hopefully help us a lot carrying all of our gear. Um, we don't have an ATV or a sled or anything like that. I mean a mobile like a motorized sled um, so, And I have a very small sled so that it can fit in the back of our CRV It's just this small otter So I built this PVC um, Frame because what I wanted was I wanted to be able to Don't have my drill on here yet, but I wanted to be able to access my auger Okay access my flasher and then access my rods without having to dig around my shelter um, and then so I can just pull this out without having to mess with any of my other stuff I can get the auger out really quick and easy drill holes put it back in if I don't find anything move on <clears throat> at the same time sometimes when we leave it's dark and very very cold and this shelter can get really hard to stuff back into the sack it has straps so that i can carry it that's what i did last year i carried it on my back and i just pulled my sled without this uh frame with all my stuff in the sled um that can really suck in the middle of the night when it's cold and you're trying to stuff this thing back into its bag so i have it set up so there's enough room under here that I can just, if I don't, I don't have to stuff this in the bag. I can just fold it up, stuff it in there, put my auger on top, and then I pull everything out. I also have these little pads here that are holding everything up to put under our feet once we get in the shelter to keep our feet warm. Have our scooper, spud bar, six rods. Some of the rods that aren't really long, I can flip upside down and put right in here like this to protect them um, so that they don't get broken. I've broken, well, I break one every season at least. And then I have my bucket on top. This will have like minnows and any kind of other stuff we need. Right now it's holding a new harness that I got. Since this sled's pretty heavy, uh, one of the hard parts was just you're always, your arms are always like behind you pulling that very thin rope. Now I have shoulder harness so I can Put the harness on and tow this sucker across the lake. I actually haven't tested this out yet, but I do have a cross beam going across the bottom so it shouldn't tip over while the auger or the shelter are inside, even with this stuff kind of sitting up high. And we should be able to pull it over a fair amount of bumps and stuff without dumping it. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world if it got dumped, but you know, I think it's gonna be okay. Just have to be kind of careful with it. Have this is my extra drill I use to drill um, pilot holes and stuff for the anchors. Um, extra rope. These will be on my boots. I had to get some new ones this year because the ones last year broke. My hand auger in case uh, extension in case my batteries run out on my cordless drill. And I think that about covers it. And then obviously the main bucket is for me. This little chair is for Vivian, and a little bench is for Vivian, and, and I have my tripod for filming. That's the other thing. It's like one thing to go 
to go ice fishing it's another thing to try to film it um, it just adds even more stuff to carry most of the batteries and stuff I'll either keep inside my jacket or inside this and I'll throw a couple um, hand warmers in it and uh, and then I have a minnow bucket that can fit inside of this too that comes with it um, we used it the last couple of years actually and it works pretty good so I think we can fit all of our stuff and then once we have the shelter set up this sled is small enough I can actually pull it inside so when it starts getting hot and stuff we can hang our coats on it you know we can set stuff up off the ice so it's not getting slushy and stuff on the bottom all right folks well that does it for the uh, ice fishing prep tour hopefully by the next video we should be out on the ice um, I do have a review of that Eskimo shelter I might put that up at some point maybe if we go out and we get skunked or for some reason we don't go this weekend um, I might post that but hopefully we'll have some ice fishing videos come we're gonna be really trying to catch some northern pike this year um, Vivian's never caught a walleye and then we're gonna try to get on some bigger panfish uh, like master class bluegill uh, bigger crappie bigger perch uh, last year we caught our first perch now we need to try to catch some bigger ones all right thanks for watching team Kramer fishing um, hit the subscribe button and uh, you can watch us go fish some more later